टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट सोरेलिन इन कम्बिनेशन विद अल्ट्रा वायलेट ए रेडिएशन और पुवा थेरेपी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वट इज पुआ पुआ इज ए कम्बिनेशन ऑफ फोटो केमोथेरापी ट्रीटमेंट विच कंसिस्ट ऑफ ओरल और टॉपिकल सोरेल इन फोटो सेंसिटाइजर एंड लॉन्ग वेव लेंथ अल्ट्रा वायलेट ए रेडिएशन स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ विच इज बिटवीन थ्री ट्वेंटी टू फोर हंड्रेड नैनोमीटर सोरेलिन प्लस अल्ट्रा वायलेट ए रेडिएशन इज कार्ड पुआ पुआ इज यूज फॉर ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ ए वेराइटी ऑफ स्किन डिजीजेज इंक्लूडिंग सोराइसिस माइकोसिस फंगाइडीज एक्जीमा मिटलाइगो एंड ग्राफ्ट वर्सिस होस्ट डिजीज वट आर सोरेलिन्स सोरेलिन्स आर कंपाउंड found in many plants which make the skin temporarily sensitive to ultraviolet a radiation the ancient egyptians were the first to use sorolens for the treatment of skin diseases thousands of years ago medicinal sorolens include methoxylene which include 8 methoxy sorolen 5 methoxy sorolen and tri sorolen these are sorolen compounds structure सोरेलिन एट मिथॉक्सी सोरेलिन फाइव मिथॉक्सी सोरेलिन एंड ट्राई मिथाइल सोरेलिन मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ पुआ इंक्लूड द क्रॉस लिंकिंग ऑफ डी एन ए बाय सोरेलिन फोटो एडप्ट इनिबिशन ऑफ डी एन ए रेप्लीकेशन लैंगर हैंड सेल्स डिप्लीशन इम्यूनोसप्रेसिव इफेक्ट्स ऑन टी लिम्फोसाइड फंक्शन and migration and the restoration of helper 17 regulatory t cell imbalance in psoriasis here you can uh, see the mechanism of action of sorolin first of all sorolin compounds interclades between dna base pairs and on exposure of ultraviolet a radiation sorolin absorbs photo photons from ultraviolet a radiation then sorolin bonds with dna base pairs forming a cross link and thus inhibiting the dna replication doses of sorolins oral compound the dose of oral sorolin used is most commonly determined on the basis of body weight 0.6 mg per kg for 8 mop and 1.2 mg per kg for 5 methoxy sorolin some authorities advocate calculating the dose according to body surface area 25 mg per meter square for 8 mop and 50 mg per meter square for 5 mop the later method of dosing has been shown to improve the therapeutic effect of pua in psoriasis oral 8 mop is taken 2 hour between 2 hour before treatment with a light meal and 5 mop should be taken at 2 to 2.5 hour before treatment topical sorolins have been used for centuries for the treatment of vitiligo sorolins currently used for topical therapy include 8 mop and trimethyl sorolin in equivalent concentrations trimethyl sorolin is up to 30 times more phototoxic although it is now rarely used sorolin can be applied topically in a variety of ways a bath solution for whole body treatment and soap paint cream and gel for hands and feet scalp and other localized areas topical therapy is preferable to oral therapy in patients with hepatic dysfunction gastrointestinal disease cataracts poor compliance with eye protection and risk of drug interactions like warfarin and to allow shorter irradiation times for example for children and the elderly or those with claustrophobia a frequently used bath pua regime in the uk involves dissolving 30 ml of 1.2% 8 mop lotion in 140 liters of water final concentration will be 2.6 mg per liter the patient baths in this for 15 minute followed by immediate exposure to 
ultraviolet A radiation. When treating hands and feet with topical PUVA, there should be a 30 minute delay prior to irradiation to allow sorolin absorption into palmar and plantar skin. What is minimal phototoxic dose or MPD? Minimal phototoxic dose is determined in a similar way to minimal erythema dose except that it is measured 2 hour or 2.5 or 4 MOP after the patient has ingested a standard dose of sorolin. Typical UVA test doses used include 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 1, 1.4, 2, 2 2.8, 3.7, 5.5, 7.7, and 10.8 joule per centimeter square but may vary between centers. The test sites are read after 72 to 96 hours. Minimal phototoxic dose testing allows the determination of the optimal starting dose, allows identification of under dosage or poor absorption and may identify patients with abnormal photosensitivity. What are the different PUA regimes are used? Starting dose should ideally be based on the patient's minimal phototoxic dose and between 40% and 70% of the MPD is recommended. If MPD testing is unavailable or the patient's skin is too sensitively involved, too extensively involved to measure the MPD, the starting dose is based on the skin phototype. For phototype 1, dose is 0.5 joule per centimeter square. For type 2, 1 joule per centimeter square. And for to type 3 skin, 1.5 joule per centimeter square. And for type 4, 2 joule per centimeter square dose is used. The starting dose of bath pua should always be based on MPD testing because of the risk of severe photosensitivity. PUA therapy is usually administered twice weekly as PUA erythema is delayed. It had been assumed that topical PUA erythema was maximal at 72 hours, but more recent studies have shown the peak to occur at about 96 and 144 hours. So what are the indications of PUA therapy? Psoriasis, vitiligo, atopic eczema, cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, polymorphic light eruption, palmoplantar pustulosis, petrasis rubra pilaris, pomphalex eczema, systemic sclerosis, morphia, graft versus host disease, granuloma, annular, and lichen planus. And these are the absolute contraindications. Dysplastic nevus syndrome, systemic lupus erythematosus, Dermatomyositis, genetic skin cancer syndromes, xeroderma pigmentosum, Gorlin syndrome, Bloom syndrome, cocaine syndrome, and patients unwilling or unable to comply with safety procedures, patients who are medically unfit and unable to stand, severe cardiovascular or respiratory disease patients. Factors favoring the use of PUA therapy. Failure to respond to UVB or rapid relapse following UVB. If patients having thick plaques, palmoplantar disease, having nail disease, and photosensitivity to UVB but not UVA, erythrodermic or generalized pustular psoriasis, petrasis rubra pilaris, which usually flares with UVB but can respond well to PUA. So how PUA is administered? PUA is usually delivered in a cabin with fluorescent tubes that surround the patient as depicted in this picture. PUA can also be delivered locally with units that can be used to irradiate the hands and feet. Bath PUA and localized PUA are also available for patients when systemic PUA is not recommended or is less appropriate. Adverse effects of PUA therapy. Acute effects include acute phototoxicity, pruritus and pain, nausea, blistering, provocation of photodermatosis, herpes simplex, reactivation, 
transient nail pigmentation, facial hypertrichosis, and chronic infect effects include photo aging, pua keratosis, lentigenes formation, and non melanoma skin cancer, melanoma skin cancer, and internal malignancies like lymphomas and eye problems like cataract. So, patient safety during phototherapy or PUA. First of all is eye protection. Patients must wear UV blocking goggles while receiving the treatment. Individuals receiving oral PUA must wear UVA blocking glasses for 12 hours following ingestion of sorolin. Longer duration is required if risk factors for cataract development are present. How to prevent the burning risk? Minimal erythema dose or minimal photoxic dose testing. This allows more accurate determination of starting dose than that based on skin type. Obese patients may require a modified treatment protocol like a lower starting dose as areas such as the breast, buttocks and abdomen are closer to the lamps. Use of correct UV source in cabinets that have combined UVB and UVA lamps, it is essential that the correct tubes are selected for the right patient. Lamp maintenance is important. Cabins should be kept clean and lamps should be inspected regularly. Sorolin dosage is important to ensure that the patient has taken the correct number of tablets at the correct time prior to the skin irradiation. How to reduce skin cancer risk? Male patients should wear appropriate clothing to protect the genitalia. Face, if not involved by the dermatosis being treated, should be shielded with a visor to avoid unnecessary ultraviolet exposure. For some indications, whole body treatment may not be required, uh, like for uh, polymorphic light eruption, desensitization. Treatment limited to the photo exposed skin may be sufficient. Treatment planning should take such factors into account to reduce overall UV exposure load. Thank you very much.